Hello there, my name is Amanda and I haven't had a very easy life. Growing up, my mother would constantly be verbally abusive to me, calling me worthless and pathetic. When she would drink, she would even hit me with whatever was close at hand. Sometimes she used a golf club, and one time she even used a frying pan. At the time, I didn't know why she was so mean to me, and I just assumed that it had been something that I had done. I was constantly walking on eggshells trying to avoid her so that I didn't upset her and get hurt. To make matters worse, my father always just ignored it when it happened, pretending not to see what my mother was doing to me. The physical abuse ended, though, once I was old enough and stronger and taller than my mother. But the emotional abuse didn't stop. It was always so frustrating, because around the rest of our family or our neighbors, my mother would behave like a saint. In fact, many people would compliment me on how amazing of a person she was, but I knew that it was all an act. Thankfully, my father worked for a large company and made very good money, and when I was old enough, we were able to afford for me to go away for school. They were some of the best years of my life since my school was on the other side of the country. I rarely ever spoke to either of my parents, which made avoiding my mother's abuse very easy. And it was there at school that I met Joseph. We were in many of the same classes and we hit it off right away. We liked the same movies and bands and even the same foods. After college, we kept in touch and not long after we started dating and eventually got married. I tried to tell my husband about how terrible my parents had been to me growing up, and he tried to understand, but he had grown up in a happy house where his parents loved him, which made it hard for him to understand what I had gone through. But he did agree that we should keep our distance from them. He wanted me to be happy, and while he didn't understand why I was so angry at my parents, he did understand that it was for the best for my mental health to cut ties with them. After a few years, though, my mother began to reach out to me. It turned out that my father had left her for a much younger woman, someone almost as young as me, and even though he had left her the house as well as a large sum of money, that she was feeling lonely and rejected. Apparently, he moved to a faraway country, never to be heard from again. Over the phone, she tried to guilt trip me into feeling sympathy for her, but I just couldn't. She had made my childhood a living hell, and now she was trying to butt back into my life now that I finally had found happiness. At first, I was able to shoot her down, but eventually she got in touch with Joseph and she managed to fool him into thinking that she had changed and that she was a good person. I didn't trust her, but I agreed to let her begin coming over for visits. At first, she did appear to be a different person, and even apologized for what she had done to me as a child. According to her, my father had never been faithful, and while it wasn't right of her to do, she took out her frustrations on me every time my father would cheat on her. It didn't make it right, of course, but I finally did understand why she had done what she did. Slowly, she began to visit more often, and even after she apologized, I found it hard to trust her. Until one day I came home early from work and then understood what my intuition was trying to tell me. There laying in my bed with my husband was my mother. I couldn't believe my eyes. They were in our bed having sex. Shocked, I panicked and ran out of the room and went for a drive. After a few hours, I cleared my head and then went home. But when I got there, the two of them were gone. The next day, I called my mother to scream at her, and my husband answered the phone and told me that he had fallen in love with her and that it would be best for me to not call there again. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He sounded like he had gone mad. I knew my mother was great at manipulation, but this was insane. And then I got the idea to go and speak with his parents. If I couldn't talk sense into him, maybe they could. And so I drove over to their house and told them about what had happened. They didn't believe me at first, but then I convinced them to go with me to my mother's house to prove it to them. Once there, I led them into my mother's house, and as soon as my mother saw us, she became violent and a fight broke out. My own mother hit me several times and bruised me quite badly and even bloodied up Joseph's father's nose. 
After a few minutes, though, I was able to calm everyone down enough for the fighting to end, and Joseph spoke up. I'm sorry, Amanda, but I don't love you anymore. I love your mother, and I want a divorce so that I can marry her. Neither his parents or I could believe what he was saying. But if this is what he wanted, then I would be forced to give it to him. And so we left. The months that followed were quite hazy for me. I was feeling depressed and had a hard time functioning, but I did make it through. I got a lawyer and filed for divorce. Since I had done nothing wrong, I was able to sue both of them for alimony and got $45,000 from each of them. The money wouldn't make me happy, but it did help me to get back on my feet. I moved away and found myself a new house to live in, along with a new job as well. It was the best thing for me. I made new friends and found that my new job was very challenging, but also a better fit for me. It paid better than my old job and even had better hours as well. Just as everything began to fall into place though for me. My ex-husband called me. How he got my new number I don't know, but he began to complain about my mother. Apparently, not long after I left town. My mother became sick and the strange illness slowly made her more and more ill. They eventually were able to put her on medication to help her get better. But by that time, the illness had left her stuck in a wheelchair and unable to take care of herself. Exhausted and desperate for help, my ex-husband called me up and was trying to get me to lend a hand. Please, she is your mother. You need to come and give a hand helping her. I can't do it on my own. You should have thought of that before you cheated on me with her. As far as I'm concerned, the two of you are dead to me. You don't understand. She can't even use the bathroom by herself and she is so incredibly mean and constantly calls me nasty names. Oh, that's where you are wrong. I do understand. She did the exact same thing to me growing up. Joseph, you made this choice and now you have to deal with the consequences of that choice. And with that, I hung up and blocked his number. A small part of me empathized with him, but it was true that he had made a choice to cheat on me with her and then he chose to marry her. Everything after that was all his problem. Just because he now regretted it didn't make the pain that he had caused me to go away. After that, I didn't hear from them again, but I did hear from mutual friends of ours how he was doing. By the sounds of it, he and my mother had blown through all of my mother's money that she had gotten from my father and were now living very poorly. Whenever my friends saw my ex-husband, he was always wearing torn and dirty clothes and it was obvious that they were struggling financially. After all, his parents had disowned him after what he had done to me, and he didn't have the money to put my mother in a home which would free him from the responsibility of caring for her. It's very unfortunate, but that's what happens when you're a terrible human being. Thanks for watching.